We're just waiting uh, the green light from the media team, from the Muhandis, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters in Islam I would like to welcome you to this uh, series of lectures which are entitled The Afterlife Afterlife as we know the life that we live in right now is the life of the dunya, the worldly life. But there's going to be another important life, which is going to be the permanent life. So this particular series was given the title of the afterlife. And alhamdulillah, today, which is going to be the first week or the first Saturday that we're going to have this particular series, the first lecture, will be given by our Ustaz, Ustaz Jamal Abdel Nasir. And the title of this lecture is The Snatcher of Souls. And inshallah ta'ala, the Ustaz is going to tell us what do we mean by that, the Snatcher of Souls, bi'inillahi ta'ala. On the 6th, which is going to be next Saturday, we have another lecture which is going to be part of the series called Trials of the Grave. Because you're going to die, your home is going to be the grave. So what is going to happen there? That's going to be for next week. And then after that, we're going to have a third lecture, which is going to be on the 13th. And that lecture will be delivered by Ustaz Abu Taymiyyah. And the title of it is The Day of Judgment. Because we're not going to be left, we're not going to be left in the grave. We will be resurrected. And then the Day of Judgment is going to happen. So that, title, that lecture will be given by Ustaz Abu Taymiyyah on the 13th. And then there's going to be another talk the week after that, which is going to be the 20th. And that's about, that one is going to be about hellfire. It's going to be about hellfire. Because some people will have to go to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those ones. Allahumma ameen. And then the final lecture of this particular series, which will take place on the 27th. It's going to be the final Saturday of August. So you can see how we have thought about this series, the afterlife series. So is, you, can, you can see it is going in order, in a logical order, alhamdulillah. So it's going to be kick-started by our Ustaz, Ustaz Jamal, hafizahullah ta'ala. I want to take this opportunity to thank him for coming and accepting our invitation. And I know that he just came back from abroad, mashallah, from the wonderful holy land, the wonderful place, the Holy Land, Alhamdulillah, Mecca and Medina, and he has recently performed his Hajj. Nasallallahu Subhanahu wa Taala and yataqabbalah. Allahumma amin. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept his Hajj and all the good deeds he did during that time. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, Inshallah Taala, the talk will be delivered by the Ustaz right now, and he also he was with us, Mashallah, uh, for the last couple of hours. The Ustaz, Alhamdulillah, also came to the graduation of our college today, Al Furqan College, the first year graduation, and Alhamdulillah, he gave us a beautiful talk there. And now this is going to be the main talk of the afternoon, Inshallah Taala. And I want to say to Ustaz Jamal, Tafadhal or Fali Tafadhal, Mashkuran, Jazahullah Khairan. And those of you who are here, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reward you greatly for this. Barakallahu fiqum. Bismillah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa baraka wa sallama tasliman kathira. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilman tanfa'una bihi ya rabbal alameen. اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما مباركا ميمونا ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما وبعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الإمام ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى the famous Quran interpreter who produced a masterpiece an encyclopedia of Quranic exegesis. He took perhaps the most orthodox tafsir on the planet and he began to summarize it and summarize it and summarize it. 
until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his work, meaning Al-Imam Ibn Kathir, acceptance, the likes that no other book of tafsir has been given. It doesn't mean that it is the greatest, nor does it mean that it is the most thorough. But you find, subhanAllah, this tafsir book, this work, to be perhaps translated in nearly every single language. For sure, more than the other books of tafsir. What is the book that he summarized from? Does anybody here know? What is the tafsir book that Imam Ibn Kathir summarized from? We do not know. We know? No, we don't know. It is the tafsir of Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. Tafsir al-Tabari. And his tafsir is called Tafsir Ibn Kathir. This Imam, he has a maxim. He says, مَنْ عَاشَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ مَاتَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ بُعِثَ فِيهِ The one that lives by something, he will surely die by it. And the one that dies by that thing, he will surely be resurrected by it. This is a reality. And this will happen. So this gives us an understanding before we even enter into the lecture, how most of us are going to die. When you pick up your phone, do you pick it up to read the Qur'an and go on the Qur'an app? Do you go on the pillar app, the new one that people use, everybody left, uh, what's it called? What's the one that has the virus? Muslim Pro. They left that, right? Everybody's on the new one. So if that's why you're using your phone, it's going to be very likely that you're going to pass away like this. That's what he's saying. And he's also saying that if you always pick up your phone and you're texting away, and you're on social media, and that's what you do. And you tusalli khamsa marrat, watatafarraj khamsa marrat. Five times is all you're on Facebook, or five times you're on Twitter a day, and this has become your salah now, the same thing, the same amount. And most likely, your final breath, you're going to be doing this, and your phone's going to drop. Most likely. Wadihun jiddan. That's what he's saying. And this has been strengthened by the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. كُلٌ يُبْعَثُ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Every single person will be resurrected by how they died, in the way they died. The Prophet ﷺ, just before he passed away, he was going for hajj. And one of his companions, he was going to hajj with him. He was mounted on top of his camel, and then he had an accident, he fell off, he snapped his neck, and he died like this. The Sahaba, they came, Ya Rasulullah, what do we do with him? The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تحنقوه ولا تخمروا رأسه Do not cover him with anything. Keep his two sheets that he's wearing, the ihram, when you go for hajj and umrah, keep it on. Do not cover his head, because you're not allowed to do that when you're in the state of ihram. فَإِنَّهُ يُحْشَرُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مُلَبِّيَا He's going to be resurrected on the day of judgment, saying the talbiyah. Then he died like this. Wadih, to begin with, we understand what we're saying, right? That's the main thing. He died like this, the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, he said in the Sahih, he's going to be resurrected like this. وَأَنْتَ كذلك. You are going to be like that as well. So before we move forward, every single person, it is upon him now to reflect. How, what do you keep your time busy with? What do you do? What do you keep your time busy with? How do you engage in your days and nights and your evenings and your mornings? What are you up to? Because the things that you are doing, these things are going to lead to your departure. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He says in the Quran, worship Allah until you pass. Because if you do this, this is how you are going to pass. The angel of death, he's a creation from the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the time of snatching the soul, like how this lecture has been entitled, he doesn't come down alone. Firstly, the scholars, they say, we have three types of souls. We have the good soul, we have the bad soul, and we have the diluted soul. So which one do we want to learn about first? Should we go through the good soul or the bad soul? And this is going to be only an overview because we are starting a series in this masjid and there are other speakers in the weeks ahead. Should we go through the good soul first? If you want to, the good soul, raise your hands. What about the bad soul? Okay, there's a good soul first then. Tayyib, that's good. I wanted to do the bad soul, Lena. I think if we start with the good soul, we enter in the bad soul, everybody will be sad. <laughs> But if we start with the bad soul and then we finish with the good soul, you'll leave happy. <laughs> but we start with the good soul. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
when the good soul is passing away, a large group of angels descend, as far as the eye can see. They come down. This is not the angel of death. They are the supporters, if you wish. They come down. And they tell the soul to exit the body. And then when they come down, they come down with Hanut min Hanut al Jannah. They come down, firstly, with a very large blanket, if you wish, and it is fragrance with a nice smell from paradise. They come down. And then the angel of death says, Ukhruji ila mawfiratin min Allahi wa ridwan. O good soul, depart and come out into the forgiveness of Allah Jalla wa ala and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then it comes out. Those angels then take this body. They go up into the sky. Take the soul, sorry. They go up into the sky and they go into the skies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Seven skies. Each one they are seeking admission. Can we enter? And then the angels over there, they say, yes, enter. They go to the second one. They seek permission. Can we enter? Yes, enter. Until they get right to the top. When they get right to the top, this soul is reunited with other souls that it knew in the world that passed away before it. Maybe family members, maybe loved ones, maybe friends, maybe teachers, and so on. So when they meet with the other souls, those souls ask questions. They say, how is Fulan? How is so-and-so? The people that we left behind, did so-and-so get married? Did so-and-so have children? They ask these questions. The angels, they say, this person has just come from the grief of the dunya. Let them rest for a little bit. So they go and they rest. This authentic report in the Sahih. They go and they rest. After this, they come back and they ask the questions and the questions are answered. Once all of this is done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands this soul now to go back to the earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, record this slave of mine's name in the Illiyeen. In the Illiyeen. It's a special record of names of the elite slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who remained steadfast in this world. Record his or her name in the Illiyeen. The soul comes back down into the grave. After it goes into the grave, the two angels come into the grave. What is authentic and no scholar disputes about is the fact that there are two angels that come to the grave. Some of the scholars, they differ with regards to the names of those two angels. So some of the scholars, they say it is authentic that they are called Munkar and Nakir, and others, they say that's not the case. But whatever the case is, two angels. They begin asking the questions. Man Rabbuka, who is your Lord? He says very confidently straight away because it's a good soul. Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Ma dinuka, what is your religion? No hesitation. Dini al Islam. Man hadha rajul alladhi bu'itha fikum. Who is this man that was sent to you? Rasuluna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Straight away, with no hesitation. That's a good soul. Then they begin, the angels, coming to this person and asking them about different things that they did from acts of worship. They answer all of the questions correctly. And then the angels, they say, we knew you were going to answer all of these things correctly because you read the Qur'an. You did actually do the right thing when you were living. You didn't give into the temptations of this world and the snares of the devil. You remain steadfast and if you failed and if you made a mistake and if you came with shortcomings, deficiencies, you got right back up again. You made tawbah and you went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The grave is now expanded for this person. It is expanded in terms of the length and also the width. This person is shown from a window his place in paradise. This grave has now become a paradise, but this is not the eternal paradise. It is rawda min riyad al jannah, but Allah subhanahu wa taala, O slave, has going to, has place for you, has made for you a place in paradise. You are going to enter into it, and this is going to be your eternal abode. So then the angels they say to this person. Now you can sleep, the sleep of a newly wedded person. A newly wedded person. How is a newly wedded person going to sleep? Ah, khalas, that's the response. Everyone knows. Khalas, young people know, old people know, everyone knows. The newly wedded person is not going to be sad. It's not going to be angry. It's not going to be stressed. It's not going to be looking at the time, <laughs> what time should I get up? No, he wants to stay there all night and all day if he can. Or she can. It's the same for both genders. That's how you're going to be. You don't want to leave. 
In fact, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, he says that if a bird were to come, take with its beak a pebble every 100 years until all of the pebbles of the dunya are taken and then you tell this person after that you're going to come out of the grave that Allah made for you like this, this person will be in a state of terrible grief. Imagine, ayyuh al ikhwa one pebble every 100 years and you have to take all the pebbles of the world. That's basically forever as well. Basically it is. When is it going to end? One pebble every 100 years and all of the pebbles of the world. But the fact that they know that you're going to leave this khair, this is going to trouble them. They're going to be told now, you're going to remain here and you are going to sleep until the angel makes the final blow. This is before the blow of the day of judgment. Until then, you're going to remain here. And then obviously when that blow is made, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ تَقُومَ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ بِأَمْرِهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ دَعْوَةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ إِذَا أَنْتُمْ تَخْرُجُونَ One da'wa, one call is made, everybody's going to come out of their graves. This is what the angel is going to do. So this is a summary, because we have a very short lecture, of the good soul. A very brief summary from one hadith. It's a quite a long hadith. And inshallah ta'ala, in your own time, you can revisit it inshallah ta'ala. The bad soul. The bad soul, the same thing happens. A large amount of angels, they descend from the sky, as far as the eye can see. And then they say, along with the angel of death, O oh, evil soul, come out of this body. So the soul begins to hide. It doesn't want to come out. It tries to hide within the body. Until after this, it is ripped out and it is taken out. They have come down with a blanket made of fire. And the stench and the smell that is coming from these angels, it is one of the worst smells that anybody has smelled from this world. The hadith actually mentions that the way those angels look, it's very terrifying and scary as well. These are the type of angels that descend. By the way, we don't see that. The, only the deceased sees this. We don't see it. So sometimes when you are with a person who's passing away and you see them in this terrible state, maybe it's because they're witnessing things like this from the ghayb that we can't understand. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, if I wasn't merciful enough to you, I would have wished for you to hear the screams and the cries of the people of the grave. He said, everybody hears it except for you, except for insan. Everyone hears it. The animals hear it too. The animals hear it. All of the creation hear it. But if you were to hear it as human beings, the cries of the people of the grave, you would have fell down unconscious because you cannot bear it. So out of mercy towards us, we do not hear any of this. Those angels, they come down, they take the soul. Similar, similarly, they go up into the sky they go to all of the skies one by one. The first sky, the second sky, the third sky. They ask for permission. We have a bad soul. Can we come? They're not allowed to come in. So it's not like the good soul. You cannot come here. So what happens? In the end, the same way the good soul's name was written in the Illiyin or the Sijin. Or what did I say before? The Illiyin, right? This bad soul is going to be written in the Sijin. These are all in the Quran. It's in Surah Al-Mutafifin. Sijin is the record of the bad souls. It's going to be written there. They're going to be asked the questions. The soul is going to be taken back into the grave. They're going to be asked the same three questions. This person is unable to answer the questions. Not only are they unable to answer the questions, there's no confidence at all. They are in a state of tawattur. They're very nervous. They're not stable. They're not comfortable in themselves on how they feel. Man rabbuka, who is your Lord? Some of the reports, they say that this person will say, ha ha. They'll say, they'll say anything, but they can't say Allah. Maybe, logically, he knows it's Allah, but you won't be allowed to say something. You can't testify to it if you didn't live by it. You know this? As like some of the scholars of the past, they would say, Iman is not what you wear. لَيْسَ بِالتَّحَلِّي وَلَيْسَ بِالتَّمَنِّي It's not for wishful thinking as well. وَلَكِنْ it is مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَتْهُ الْأَعْمَالِ Iman, it is what is dropped into the heart, what is poured down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into your heart. But then, وَصَدَّقَتُهُ الْأَعْمَالِ Your actions have to be in line with it. So this person knows Allah. Definitely they heard the name Allah before. Definitely they knew Islam before. But there's no صَدَّقَتُهُ الْأَعْمَالِ They didn't do anything. In this world, if you say, I believe in Allah, and you do no actions, is this accepted? No, it's not. 
That's why Allah always says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ If you just say, رَبُّنا الله, it's not accepted from you. ولذلك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said الإيمان بضع وستون شعبة أو وفي رواية بضع وسبعون شعبة فأفضلها قول لا إله إلا الله وأدناها إماطة الأذى عن الطريق والحياء شعبة من الإيمان This hadith is a very famous hadith in creed and aqeedah and it speaks about the branches of faith إيمان is 60 or so branches in another رواية 70 or so branches the best of it, the highest of it, is qawlu, a statement. La ilaha illallah. The lowest of it, it is to remove something harmful from the pathway. And then he said, modesty and shyness is from the branches of faith. The, our scholars, they say, these three constitute iman. A statement on the tongue, actions of the limbs, and the action of the heart. So this person, he only has a statement on the tongue. So you can't say la ilaha illallah in the grave because that's not enough. You didn't come with actions on the limbs and you didn't believe in it in your heart. So he cannot say it. The next question. Ma dinuk? What is your religion? Nothing. Who is the man that was sent out to you? Who is your prophet? He didn't know his prophet. He didn't follow his way. He didn't know about his way. Maybe the only thing he knew about him was that he was called Muhammad and he was an Arab. Maybe. Maybe less than that. Maybe slightly more than that. But knowledge is not what is going to save you. It is your ibadah. So he could not answer this question. What happens after this? The grave now, it is brought close into this person and this person is squashed from all angles of the grave. And then after this, angels come here. One of them has an ax and they are torturing this person. This is before Jahannam, it's before Yom Al-Qiyamah. They're torturing this person in the grave and they have weapons. This is what's happening. All for what? 60 to 70 years that you lived. 20 years of it was sleep. 10 years of it was chit chat and play. A bit more than this was you growing up. A bit more than this was you in the bathroom and you, etc. A bit more than this was you enjoying with your friends and socializing. When you deduct all of this, how many hours did you actually have from this 60, 70, 80 years of life you are going to live to worship Allah? Only a bit, and you didn't have patience. The Prophet ﷺ, he also says, that the person who was living in this world, أَنْعَمِي أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ The person who had the best life from this world, but he's from the people of the fire. When he's dipped into the fire one time and taken out, one dip, ya akhi, just a dip, فقط, and he's taken out, he's going to be asked, هَلْ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا قط? Do you see any type of goodness when you're in the world? Remember, he, the, he's the person who had the most goodness. He doesn't say la, he says, Wallahi Rabbi la, la, by Allah, no, I've never seen it. One dip made him forget everything. And the Prophet ﷺ said the opposite for the other person. Aba'as ahli dunya min ahli jannah The one that had the worst life in the dunya, but he's from the people of Jannah. He's put into Jannah just for a moment, he's taken out. Do you remember any harm from the dunya? I don't remember anything at all. One second in dunya, in Jannah, made me forget everything that I went through. When I was in the dunya. This person's grave now becomes hufra min hufar in nar. It becomes a pit from the pits of the hellfire. He hears the people who came to his grave leaving. Hatta yasma'a qara'ani alihim. He hears them walk away their footsteps. But no one can help him. Yatba'u al-mayyita thalatha. Three things go with the dead person. Ahluhu wa maluhu wa amaluhu. His family, his wealth and what else? His actions. Two go back, one remains. His family, they have to bid farewell. Even if it is the mother. She has to bid farewell. Her heart is broken. And so is yours. She's crying a lot. And so are you. And she feels very sad. And so do you. But this is the sunnah of the dunya. al mufaraqa You have to go separate ways. Nobody can share that grave with you. Nobody can bail you out of the grave. Nobody can support you in any way, shape or form. Anything that you face, it is because of what your own hands put forward. Any form of good that you put forward, you will find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ Any small good that you do, you will find it with Allah. Any small bad you do, you will find it with Allah. So these people, they leave. 
This person wishes that they can go back. And when they are resurrected on the day of judgment, they will cry and they will plead and they will yell and they will do everything they can. And they will ask and they will ask. But it is all going to go to vain. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يُوَ تُسِي إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ Those people that have brought to stand right at the entrance of the nar. فَقَالُوا they said, يَا لَيْتَنَا What would be unto us? Let us go back. Let us go back. We are not going to reject anything. We are going to be from the believers. Is it going to be accepted though? Nobody is given a second chance. Nobody. You have your chance now to worship Allah. You only have it now. One chance and that is it. Nobody will be given a second opportunity. And whatever you do, it will be with Allah on that day. You're not allowed to even make an excuse. You can't utter a word. هذا يوم لا ينطقون ولا يؤذن لهم فيعتذرون you won't be allowed to say anything because you make excuses. And imagine, subhanallah, if you just remain steadfast for a little bit of time, you are going to receive in return all forms of goodness that is going to ensure that you have the best time in the afterlife. You are going to be the person who has the best time. A lot of people now, if you ask them, how are they getting about their day-to-day life? And the majority of the people here are young. Like yesterday we had a class, for example, in London. And we were going through the biography of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And we asked, how many people know the Ten Promised Paradise? And most people don't know. I didn't ask this second question yesterday, but I should have. If I were to ask, for example, maybe ask it here. Do we know all of the prophets that are mentioned in the Quran? You'd be surprised to know that most people don't know. That was ten sahaba. If I say, give me the names of 10 footballers, you'll be able to do so, without a doubt. Most of you anyway. 10 celebrities. If you think hard enough, you could do it. We ask ourselves a second question. Who are your role models? Who are the people you look up to? If you think now, just because you're young, you can just do these things and inshallah ta'ala you will have an opportunity. Haven't you seen in this country, let alone this summer, this month of Dhul-Hijjah, how many young people passed away? Didn't you see day after day people were passing away? People that just went to sleep. We saw a brother that we know personally from London, rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatan wasi'ah. He recorded a podcast about his revert story. One day, the next day he's dead. The next day, no problems at all. He woke up. He was fine, and during the day he passed away, rahimahullah ta'ala. People of knowledge passed away. We lost two Medina graduates that passed away. And you know, you're no different. You think about it yourself now, between you and Adam alayhi salam, your first father, how many men are standing? Adam alayhi salam is the father of all of us. He is our father, he is the first creation of Allah. Is your father alive? Some people here perhaps know. Most people, yes. But how many people now their grandfather is alive? And we'll show now statistics. Let us raise our hands. If your father is alive, raise your hands. May Allah preserve all of those fathers. And all of the people whose fathers have entered into the Akhirah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them, widen their grave, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit them into the highest paradise. Keep your hands up, those people who raise their hands. Those people whose fathers are alive, keep your hands up. Whilst you're keeping it up, I will ask the second question. Then, based on your answer, keep it up or put it down. Is your grandfather alive? Including me, no. Look how, how much it dropped. The people whose hands are up, keep it up. The young folks, their hands are up. Keep it up. Is your great-grandfather alive? Great-grandfather. You, yeah? MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. So, MashaAllah, your father, your grandfather, and your great-grandfather. So that means you need to be a father soon then. Inshallah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> so we were just left with that young brother over there. What's your name? Hudayfa. Mashallah. Do you know Hudayfa from the Sahaba? What was his name? Hudayfa from Yaman. Do you know Hudayfa from the Prophets? Well, there wasn't one as far as we're aware. As far as we are aware. There are many prophets that came that we are unaware of. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ But we're not aware of a prophet who was called Hudayfa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect your fathers. 
and this is a side point, uh, it just dawned on me now. This is a message to the younger brothers and sisters and those who are going to be watching online and those who are following us now. And we have a culture, those who are born and raised in this country, and I'm born and raised in this country as well. But alhamdulillah, I think I used to have it, but I don't have it at the moment, which is why I'm shedding light upon it. So a lot of us, with our grandparents, for example, we don't say, in English, we don't say, my grandfather or my grandmother. What do they say instead? My dad's mom or my dad's dad. That's so common. You may have heard of it before. And some of us may even be guilty of it. Do you know how bad that is? What you're saying, you don't have to admit it, but what you are saying is, that's my dad's dad, and that's my dad's mom, that's, that's, that's him and him. That's not me, I'm separate. You disassociated yourself from them. This word is a word that exists. It exists in English, it exists in Arabic, it exists in your mother tongue. Why don't you just use it? This is my jadda, hada jaddi. Adihi jaddati, my grandfather, my grandmother, that's what you say. That's a very important point. It's not to do with the lecture, but please keep that in mind. Inshallah ta'ala. There's no sort of thing as dad's mom, mom's mom, mom's dad, grandmother, grandfather. If you want to make it clear to the people that it's on your dad's side, your mom's side, you just say maternal, paternal. Maternal grandfather, paternal grandfather. <laughs> so we were saying that a lot of us, we don't have our fathers. Some of us are grandfathers, some of us are grand. If this is the case, you have to know with yaqeen and conviction, you are the next man in line. Death now is coming to you. It is going to be knocking on your door. How many times has death come to your street? How many times has it come to your own family? How many times has it come to your friends? How many times has it come to the people that you know? So many times. If a person thinks that they can escape death, then listen to the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُوا يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتُ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدًا Wherever you go, if you dodge, if you dive, if you hide, even if you go, Allah says, to a very high fortress, Buruj Mushayyada, Yudrikum al Mawt, He says, Mawt will come to you. Surah Al Jumu'ah, Qul inna al Mawt al Ladi tafiruna minhu, fa inna hu mulaqikum. It is going to meet you. Kullu man alayha fan, wa yabqa wajhu rabbik, thul jalali wal ikram. Every single thing will perish. Every single person will die. Even the Malak al Mawt we spoke about will die as well. Everything. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the first, none have come before. He's the final, none will be after. He's going to be the only one remaining, subhanahu jalla jalaluhu. How many times has Allah said, Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mawt? So many times. So this snatcher of the soul, it is a reality. How do you keep yourself now busy? This is the final part of the lecture. How do you keep yourself busy upon the ta'a of Allah? How do you enjoin all of the time upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First and foremost, you make dua to Allah. A lot of us, we don't make enough dua. And notice my words, I don't say we don't make dua, we don't make enough though. You should be making dua all of the time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi kulli ahyanihi, like the hadith has come. He would remember Allah all of the time. You need to remember Allah through dua. And the dua that he used to make was Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi Thabbit qalbi ala deenika Oh, turn out of the hearts Keep my heart firm upon your religion Ask Allah for it He's the only one that can give it to you Do not rely on your own efforts I'm going to go to the masjid and pray salah and jama'ah I'm going to go to this markaz and learn the Quran al kareem I'm going to go to Umrah and Hajj I'm going to be obedient to my parents I'm going to give sadaqah You can do all of this But if he doesn't give you tawfiq You will not be able to do it al muwaffiq ma wafaqahu Allah You may do all of these things And Allah may allow you to only get sin from it Some people are doing good actions But they're receiving bad deeds Subhanallah some people do bad deeds, they get good actions. It's possible. So you need to ask Allah. That's the first thing. The second thing is, in order for you to have a nice departure from this world and to enter into the Akhirah with no problems, problem-free, stress-free, you need to ensure that you take from the dunya the only amount that you need. Qadr al-darura. A person who indulges in the dunya, he's going to be a dunya-minded person. And we make a disclaimer. The deen and the sharia, because we have young people here as well as parents, doesn't say don't have dunya, don't go to school, don't get married, don't have a job. It doesn't say this. That's wrong. And no sheikh or no preacher or no teacher who has even a little bit of Islamic knowledge will tell you this. That's not true. 
The Sahaba, they were businessmen. The Prophet ﷺ, with his wife, they used to do business and trade. No one will say this and claim this. But what everybody will tell you, and nobody can issue a fatwa for, is if you make your dunya the priority, and you make the deen not your priority, you are in a problem. That's for sure. So when we're saying take from the dunya what you need, if you take the, from the dunya what you need, and you do not give it more than it deserves, then you are going to be focusing on your hereafter because you're going to be there forever. You came here yesterday, you're leaving here tomorrow. That's the reality. And everything you have from your assets, you're leaving it behind. You can't take anything over there. It would be good if you have this nice business of yours now. And then when you die and you pass away, you can transfer the money. Now you have two accounts. You have your Barclays and you have your Monzo and you have your NatWest and you have your Lloyds and you have all of this. And all you do is go on your phone, transfer from this account to the other account. In a second is in the other account. It would be nice if that was possible. All my money that I had in the dunya, now that I died, I want to have it in the akhirah. I'm going to just make a little transfer now. It's going to come to me over there. Is that possible? No, it's not possible. Can someone else send it to you? No, they can't. So you need to just take what you need. وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَىٰ The Prophet ﷺ, he also says in the Sunnah, as well as this ayah in the Qur'an, the only thing you need to focus on is taqwa. Take taqwa. Take as much of it as you can. You do not know which action is accepted. Some of the Sahaba, they used to say, we're going to try to do as many actions as possible because we don't know which one is accepted. And then Ibn Umar, he would say, if I knew one action is accepted from me, I would wish death upon myself. Because Allah is merciful. Maybe through the action that he accepted, I will enter into paradise. But I don't know which one he's going to accept. So the second advice is this. Take from the dunya only what you need. Focus on your akhirah. Especially if you are young. Allah loves everybody who worships him. But Allah loves especially the young person who worships him. That's why from the seven who are going to be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah. A young person who grew up on the worship of Allah. It doesn't say an old person. Because the old person, naturally they should be doing ibadah. What else do you have left? You're at the end of Nihayatul Mataf now. The end of your life. But the young person, he's fighting his desires and he's doing the good thing. This is the second thing. The third thing. It is to keep yourself with righteous people, specifically people that you can take as role models. Every single person here should have at least one person. I'm talking from the people who are alive. Our role models are the Prophet ﷺ and his Sahaba. But the people that you live with now, you should have at least one. And if you can have more than one, you have more than one. How do you select a role model? Very simply, very briefly. Anybody that you have met, that you know personally, that you only see inspires you towards Allah and the home of the hereafter, and they don't speak to you about anything worldly they never have, this is a sign. I'm not saying you should, but this is a sign that this is a person you take as a role model. مثلا, I have role models. And this is one of the criteria that I have selected for myself that I'm going to take these people as role models. And I've never regretted it, even for one moment. Because if he's not speaking to me about dunya and he only speaks to me about my Lord and how to be in paradise and what is good for me, does he get money for this? What is he getting from it? He doesn't get money. He doesn't get praise. He doesn't get gifts. He doesn't get good words. He doesn't get nothing from me and he doesn't get nothing from anybody else. This person must have in his heart so much conviction and certainty that Allah is going to reward him for this. So he's working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's serving Allah in this way. These are the people that you take as role models. If you do not have these people as role models, you should be wary and worried that Yawm Al-Qiyamah you'll be resurrected with the other role models. Al-Mar'u Ma'a Man Ahab. A person will be with the people he loved. If you love the worldly people, you will only be with them. Yawm Al-Qiyamah you'll be together. This is the third advice. The fourth advice, and it is the final one, it is we ensure as much as possible, inshaAllah ta'ala, that we come with a lot of tawbah and istighfar. We turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in forgiveness and repentance. We ask Allah to forgive us generally. And we ask Allah to forgive us specifically. The actions that we remember that we did and the ones that we forgot about or the ones that we told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last time when we made dua, we will never go back to it and then we return back to it. We ask Allah to forgive us for all of that. And if you do this regularly, Allah will love you for it. Inna Allah loves the tawwabin. 
Allah loves the ones who repent to him all of the time. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Return back to Allah and submit to Allah, surrender to Allah. Whilst you are breathing and you have the opportunity now, before a punishment comes, Allah, he says, and nobody will be able to help you. هذا آخره وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وجزاك الله خير الجزاء أستاذنا عبد جمال عبد الناصر and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from him, Allahumma ameen, and to make us those who will benefit from it, Allahumma ameen. And inshallah ta'ala, we have a few minutes of qu- uh, for questions. If you have any question related to the topic that the uh, Sheikh talked about, and we'll give you that opportunity, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Brother Adam, if you... The diluted soul is mentioned in Surah at tawbah Shall I repeat the question or do you want to repeat uh, it? So yes, you said that we mentioned in the beginning the good soul, the bad soul And we briefly summarized those two And we also mentioned diluted soul And we didn't cover that, you're right This is mentioned in the Quran They mixed Righteous actions And other actions that were bad Allah, he said, Asallahu an yatub alayhim. So this person is under the Mashiach of Allah. It's a bit difficult with this one. That's the point with this one. This one is a little bit tough to understand. Are you going to be forgiven? Are you going to be held account? We hope that the person is forgiven. So a person has to ensure that they do not become a diluted soul. A person becomes a good soul. And that's why from the final advices that I gave now was a tawbah. Because if you make tawbah, all of the sins are forgiven. You won't be held accountable. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Jazakallah khair. And any other question regarding the topic? Yes, Brother Umar. They hear everything, they're aware. So they hear, they hit the footsteps. Oh, the question. That's our, yeah. <laughs> the question was the people of the grave, what do they hear specifically? So when they come to the grave and they are burying this person and they are there and they are leaving, all of this they hear, they are aware of it. And the ahadith explain this. They are aware of what's going on and they see this and they're aware. But they go, but they, the people don't hear the person in the grave. That's the difference. Well, they, they even hear the footsteps as well. Let alone any other thing they may say. MashaAllah, barakallah feek. And any other question regarding the topic today? MashaAllah, if we don't have a third question, inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, we'll stop here, but in Allah, I just want to say to you, Jazakumullah khairan. We want to say Jazakumullah khair to our Ustaz, Ustaz Jamal Abdul Nasir. I mm. also want to take this opportunity to thank our media team for the wonderful work that they do. As you know, Alhamdulillah, all our, mashallah, and lessons and reminders, Alhamdulillah, many, many of them go out, mashallah, live. They're, they're all being live streamed majority of the time, Allahumma lak alhamd. And our media team, they're doing fantastic job. Also, please allow me to take this opportunity to thank our brother Muawiyah, as well as his brother Anas, who was with, mashallah, with the Ustad today. Alhamdulillah, they have traveled with the Ustad all the way from London. Mashallah, jazahumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them greatly for that. And we want to thank them for that. And alhamdulillah, this was also a great opportunity for them to spend time with the Ustads as well. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return them back to uh, London safely, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, uh, when they go back today, inshallah ta'ala. So jazakumullah khairan. What will be the title of our next, uh, inshallah ta'ala, uh, lecture for next Saturday. Who can remember it? What will it be about? Today was about the Malakul Mawt. It's about the grave. So next Saturday, after Salat al-Asr, it will be about the grave. Anyone else who remembers the one after that on the 13th? The Day of Judgment, mashallah. I'm really proud of you, mashallah. And can you remember and uh, who's the star who's going to do? Abu Taymiyyah, mashallah. Very good. And the one after that was, what, what was the... About hellfire, wow, mashallah. Wow, it's quite serious stuff. And the last one of the month, the 27th, what was it going to be? 
about Jannah, paradise. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So inshallah ta'ala, you can see this is the series that we have, inshallah ta'ala, for this month. And ne next month as well, inshallah ta'ala, September, we're going to have also another series. And finally, I just want to also remind you, today is the 2nd of Muharram. And uh, uh, today is the 2nd of Muharram, or the 1st, Afwan, is the 1st of Muharram, the first day of the month. And this is the, the, the new year, alhamdulillah, the Islamic calendar. This is the first day. And mashallah, we have kick-started kick our, uh, mashallah, lecture series, The Afterlife. And it was kick-started by our Ustad, Ustad Jamal. Jazakumullah uh, khairan wa hafizahullah. And I want to say to all of you, Jazakumullah khairan, for attending our lecture series on Saturdays. And this is not going to be, inshallah ta'ala, we hope that we're going to continue having these lectures. And in the light ta'ala, they will be very beneficial. And we'll be inviting the, the mashayikh. And, and so they can come and visit us, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come and give your love to the shaykh, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum.